Well, summer's ending and fall is here. And I am the luckiest boy in the world. You know why? Because I'm going to see my best friend in the world. Steve Hayes, the tired old queen at the movies. Are you feeling lucky yourself? Johnny! Look what Gary Smith made for me. Ooh! Come on. Johnny, we hadn't done a Joan Crawford movie in a while, so I decided to do one of my favorites, 1955's Female on the Beach. With Joan Crawford, Jeff Chandler, Charles Drake, Jan Sterling, Cecil Calloway, and Natalie Schaefer and Judith Evelyn. Crawford, at this point, she was doing a lot of women in peril movies. That had really started with Sudden Fear uh, two years before, uh, th maybe three years before this, where she was with Jack Palance and she was, you know, he went after her and he tried to kill her in Gloria Graham. <laughs> Torch Song had done a lot for her. Johnny Guitar had become a cult classic. It was a hard shoot for her. It wasn't exactly a hit, but since then it's been reassessed. So this movie came along and Crawford was going out with the head of Universal Pictures at the time and he offered her this part. And she said, well, I want my choice of leading men. The, the difference between Sudden Fear, the director at that time had said to her, had paired her up with Jack Palance, who was the, he said, was the only person who could make her look soft at that particular juncture. Uh, this time she had a choice and she chose Universal's top leading man at that time, Jeff Chandler. Jeff Chandler was a guy from the Bronx. He was rugged, handsome. He had a voice like this. And he also had this incredible physique, which they had to shave constantly. I mean, this guy practically had to go to Lawn Doctor every other week. You know, I mean, he was he had to be mowed. He was so airy. I don't get nasty, yeah. Just my standard service. But, oh, what a guy. And he liked Joan, she liked him. They got along just fine. I get grease on you. Will I? Joan was also having trouble with female co-stars at this particular juncture, and the one that they got for this was Jan Sterling. Now, Jan Sterling had just played the really tough babe in Billy Wilder's Ace in the Hole with Kirk Douglas. Uh, that's where she has a line with her to Kirk Douglas. She looks at him and she goes, Come on, come on, what is it? I met a lot of hard-boiled eggs in my life. But you, you're 20 minutes. She could, she could play tough characters. And they got along okay. Crawford didn't get along with Mercedes McCambridge. Hated her. Crawford didn't get along with Gloria Graham. Hated her. There weren't very many that did at this particular time. This was during the height of the Christina years. Crawford was having a hard time with younger women. But Jan Sterling and she actually got along all right. Well, I have such a nasty imagination. If you don't mind, I'd like to be left alone with it basically the story is this. It was sort of provocative for its time. She's an ex-stripper. She said, calls herself a specialty dancer. And she was hooked up with this millionaire and he left her all this money. So she's rich. He died. And she's inherited this house on the beach. It's really a lovely place with a divine view. It is lovely. All that blue. Now, the beginning of this movie, you see this woman who's been renting the house dies mysteriously. She falls off the balcony. She's drunk, played by Judith Evelyn, great stage actress. <laughs> so Crawford moves in, and the very uh, the, the real estate agent is Jan Sterling, and she says, we "Didn't expect you for a few days. We want to get the place cleaned up for you. Mrs. Crandall only left last night." Mrs. Crandall. Crawford gets in there and she says, whose boat is that? That belongs to Drummy. Who? <laughs> Drummond Hall, one of the neighbors. Mrs. Crandall let him tie up there. <sighs> Since Mrs. Crandall doesn't live here anymore, would you have him move it? Well, the next morning she comes downstairs and there's Jeff Chandler and he's in this tight t-shirt and he's cooking fish for her breakfast. And she goes, did you have a key? He says, yeah, I had a key from the last tenant. And he says, um, I thought I'd make you breakfast. How do you like your coffee? Alone. Uh, strong coffee. 
He goes, be nice. And she says, get out. So this is the whole thing. He's a kept boy. He's a gigolo. And he romances all of the older women on the beach. And he's being pimped out by this funny little couple played by Cecil Kelly and Natalie Schaefer, who was lovey on Gulligan's Island. Oh, a drummy, turn over. You don't want to ruin that gorgeous town. Why don't you go down and see if she would like something? And the poor thing must be so lonely. It'd be an act of goodness for you to offer her your friendship. All of it. So, you know, he starts coming down, and every time he shows up, Crawford gives him the rebuff, and of course the sexual tension is really strong. You're about as friendly as a suction pump. And then eventually, there's this incredible scene where, you know, she tells him off. She finds the dead woman's diary, and then tells in flashbacks how the, he wooed this woman, and she was madly in love with him, and then uh, she got more and more alcoholic, and he just left her alone, and she became miserable, and then she died mysteriously. So uh, Crawford uh, confronts him about it and accuses him of being a gigolo and slaps him across the face and he chases her out on the beach and he tears her dress off. And you see her like supposedly naked from here down and then they look at each other and they grab each other and after that they're blissfully happy. A real hot tug. And meanwhile, Jan Sterling's character is going, Why do you want to go with her? Why don't you go with me, Drummy? I wouldn't treat you bad. You could do anything. Didn't you kill the last woman that you were with? I mean, you know, so, so there's all this tension going on. All right. Start it all over again with Lynn Markham. And maybe you'll leave a few more dead ones before you're through. Well, it's a high melodrama. Crawford looks amazing in this movie. The dresses are 50s dresses. Everything's got crinolines underneath it. She's She walks around holding a martini glass and she'll, she looks so lonely. And then she'll walk on the beach. Every time she walks out on the beach alone, there's a harmonica. You know, it's really, but it's great. You buy every second of it. There's one point when Drummy has actually fallen in love with her. So he goes to the couple and he says, I don't want to be with you anymore. I'm not going to let you work for me. And they say, all right, well, that's all right. We've got ourselves a new boy. And they bring in Ed Fury. Ed Fury was like the muscle uh, posing strap guy in the 50s. He looks amazing. And you, they go, this is him. Say hello, dear. And he goes, hello. Leave this you. Oh, dumber than a bucket of hair, but keep it coming. And <laughs> Anyway, so the suspense builds up and is she really, is he a killer? Did he really kill? Somebody killed the woman. I'm not going to tell you who it was, but it's a mystery. And then you get all that spice. And it was all about, at that time, with sex uh, in the mid-50s, it was all about all these uh, innuendos about things, you know. Some money in exchange for part of my time. Which part? The part I gave Mrs. Crandall. You're very frank. But they were tearing the lid off it. It was getting more and more and more. And this was sort of a, a daring movie because, again, it was an older woman and a younger man. And, of course, that was always the double standard. Here, why can't we be friends? This is one very good reason. I don't like being handled. I happen to love this movie. I, it it, it kind of plays along. You watch it, you get into it. And, you know, Joan could make any movie work. She put these, these plots on like an old coat and warm and knew how to do it. Joan Crawford, Jeff Chandler, Jan Sterling in Female on the Beach. Let's all go to the lobby. At one point, Joan corners him down on the boat and she goes, I wish I could afford you. And he says, save up your pennies. The popcorn can't be beat. 